there's been this move, it was a very interesting move. So um, there was this move um, associated with uh, climate data and, and earthquake data and whatnot in Oklahoma. And it, went, and it even applied uh, to our state climatologist. And the notion was from coming down from government was, you know, we don't want to quash science, right? We want good science. But the role of science is just the data, right? You just collect the data. Data interpretation, data, that's not science. Science is data tables, all right? You go beyond the data table, you're not into science. Now you're into advocacy. Now you're into explanation. Now you're into policy, which is just complete nonsense. Um, but it's a very nice way of government pretending or, or corporatocracy pretending, yeah. Yeah, we, you know, we really want that data. Um, but all we want is the data. It's not your role to interpret the data. Data without interpretation is you know, like music that's not being played. Um, I mean, that is the function of the scientist. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's an interesting ploy that's been used with, uh, with various scientists, and especially agencies. You just generate the data. Well, they've done it in a number of ways, and probably the most effective way is, is through funding, right? So science is expensive. Um, and one of the ways of shaping science is, is, is to uh, set up funding programs that uh, direct science in various, uh, along various paths. And in essence, if I'm not going to fund um, this kind of science, then you're not going to be able to do it. A good example of that was, was an atmospheric scientist at the University of Wyoming who was doing some really interesting work in this, this area called a little, above a little town called Pinedale. It was the Pinedale Anticline, which is a geological formation that was one of the first places, one of the first places to show that fracking was economically viable. Huge gas boom there. <laughs> um, and so uh, then Pinedale started having these very serious problems with ozone which is very peculiar, uh, especially it was wintertime ozone. Most ozone that we think of is summertime ozone, Los Angeles and whatnot. But Pinedale was having these winter ozone pulses. As a matter of fact, the air quality was as bad as a pack of cigarettes a day. Um, question was, where the hell is the ozone coming from? Well, so this guy went out and found out that um, through a, a really interesting and complicated um, chemical process, uh, the gases leaking from this gas field, actually from the pipelines, um, were, were interacting with um, a, a photochemical process. And that, in fact, it was happening largely in the winter because snow reflection, light reflection off the snow was sort of catalyzing and making the problem even worse. So we were getting winter ozone. Um, and so he figured, well, it's coming from the gas fields. Um, and so he was, it was in the early stages of inventing this basically little drive around device where he could identify sources of leakage. And he thought that the, the gas companies would just love this, right? Because it's a little bit like the guy who wanted to monitor fracking. He said, look, 98% of wells are fine. Let's find the 2% that are a problem and shut them down or fix them. And this guy said, yeah, you know, I would bet that, you know, 98, whatever it is, 98, 99% of the pipelines are just fine. Let's find the problem ones and fix them. Um, in that case, you don't even have to shut them down. Just fix them. Um, but again, what that meant was an admission that the problem was, in fact, all right, leaks. And so the gas companies, uh, the extraction industry, had no interest in that. Um, and so they went around to the State Department of Environmental Quality, and it turned out for two years in a row that was the one proposal that there was just not enough money for. Um, and so uh, strategic defunding um, or funding things in, in particular ways, very, very potent and given the importance of, well, and so where are you going to get funding for as a scientist? You're going to get it either from the federal government, from a state agency, or from private industry, right? And so that's probably in some ways the most potent way that government can shape via corporate influence. Um, uh, and, and I don't worry about scientists, I don't worry about 99.9% .9 of scientists falsifying data, right, making stuff up. Um, that's not how it happens, right? Scientists work very hard and they're, for the most part, wickedly honest. Um, 
the, the censorship isn't in altering their data. The censorship is in shaping the questions they, they do and don't ask, can and can't afford to ask. That's where it's happening. So I was invited to participate in the Real Truth About Health conference, um, sort of out of the blue, right? This message came from Steve, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm, I'm always uh, suitably suspicious. All right, so what's the agenda? What's the deal? Um, and so I thought, well, I better dig into this. I mean, I, you know, I've got credibility. Um, issues, right? I mean, I, I don't want to. So it's just a bunch of wackies um, talking about crazy shit, right? <laughs> so uh, that's my first suspicion, right? So I, you know, I even went back and forth with him. Well, how is this thing being funded? All right? What is your motivation? What's the agenda? What's this about? Um, right? And I couldn't find the hidden agenda. Right? I couldn't find right, the, the subversive aboutness. And, and then, so then I, then what you do, you know, again, it's like, how do you, how do you discover if something is, is legit? Well, you look at who else is involved, <laughs> right? So I started looking at other participants, and I researched them on the web, right? So who are these people? And I knew, knew a few of the names, and I, I knew some of the titles of the books. And, and, um, and so I thought, well, God, you know, it's a, this, is, this is a credible group, right? And, and I, didn't, I don't know that much about health. I do know about the environment, so that's where I focused my energies in terms of credibility. Um, and, you know, are there, uh, so someone asked me, it was pretty funny, they said, well, what is this conference? And I said, well, you know, there, there's sort of like three places in the world, right? There's the wacky fringe, right? And I don't really want to be associated with the wacky fringe, right? And then there's the, the dangerous status quo, all right. And then there's this dynamic thing in the middle. Some are a little closer to the wacky fringe and some are a little closer to the convention. But they're asking some hard questions. Um, you know, there's a, there's a publication in, in the Rocky Mountain region called um, High Country News, right? And they, they pitch themselves as news from the radical center. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, it, so it struck me that, that you know, th these are people asking some really interesting questions and coming up with some really interesting answers. And would I buy it all? Um, no, but do I, am I intrigued deeply, right? Are they raising interesting questions? Yes. Um, and then, you know, this semester I'm actually teaching a seminar on free speech and censorship, right? And so, you know, I go back to some introductory remarks that I had um, in, you know, the, the opening. Um, you know, I talked about real truth, right? And I said, so does anyone have the real truth? I said, Psh, come on. For health, way too complicated. The environment, way too complicated. None of us have the real truth. If by that we mean the whole truth, right? None of us has got the whole truth. This stuff's way too complicated, All right? Do the people at this conference have the, have the real truth? Nah. Do they have um, some really important partial truths that we've not been hearing? Oh, you bet. You bet. And, you know, John Stuart Mill talked about free speech. He said, well, you know, why do we want free speech? Um, and he, he, he was, you know, he's credited with this notion, the marketplace of ideas. But, but he also had this idea that um, suppose everybody at this conference is mistaken, right? Suppose they're wrong, right? Turns out that the status quo, the conventional norms of health environment, turns out they're right, right? Um, Mill would say, great. That's fine. First of all, we can't know it, right? Because we don't know what the truth is. And secondly, even if we did know it, and this is the important thing, even if we did know it, he said the truth becomes a dead dogma when it's not challenged because it, it isn't a truth that I have invested in. It's simply a truth that I believe passively. He said, so the truth, right, has to always be challenged, right? And so I don't think that most of the things I've heard are wrong. As a matter of fact, I think most of them are pretty right-headed. But even if they were, um, it wouldn't matter. This conference would be absolutely vital because it keeps the notion of us being responsible for understanding the truth alive. Right? We become 
participants, not passive consumers of other people's truths. Um, you know, that's why I said, you know, I really think the work of this conference is not on the stage, it's in the audience. That's what it's about. It's about giving people, right, the information, the ideas, the challenges, um, so that they can reflect on their beliefs. They can critically think about what they're being told. And if they come away um, from this conference not believing anything that was said, right, but for, but thinking deeply about the things they believed before they came here, then, then that's a success. Because the truth, right, is of their making, not of their passive acceptance. So, um, uh, so when you think of it in that frame, um, and you think, as I understand, that I've not been told there's anything I can or uh, that I must say or can't say, um, then this is what the marketplace of ideas is about. This is the opportunity um, for us to, to, to be in conversation with one another about, about all the partial truths that we bring together and somehow approximate a little bit better all right, what the real truth might be.